Okay, so let's look into the NFV now. Let's look into NFV background. Thinking from IT industry transformation, it all started from IT. So in recent year, IT technologies such as virtualization and cloud computing have been booming and application deployed on hardware have been gradually migrated to the cloud. Application are deployed on private cloud, public cloud and hybrid cloud. So we have our device that running some sort of hypervisor. Popular one will be VMware and the Microsoft Hyper-V. Of course, that there are many more uh, like the Linux solution KVM. So this hypervisor allow us to abstract the hardware layer. So the operating system that are sitting on top of this abstraction doesn't really know what is the hardware because it's being shield off. We call this as a virtualization or cloudification. So we can use this concept and apply into the cloud. So at the very basic at the bottom we have the VM then on top we have the operating system and on top operating system is our apps so how this relevant to the network industry so here the question thinking about the network industry can network application be deployed in a software based manner so magically they come up with a good idea and in this context network function virtualization is introduced that is N F V. So what we are doing now here is to get a device that are very specialized, that running firmware, that is very much depend on the hardware. So we are creating a virtualized environment. We can use a general server and add on top of that a hypervisor and we deploy software in this general hardware. That is what the industry is about. So that is the background of NFV. So let's look into some of the history of uh, the origin of the NFV. In 2012, 13 top carrier released the first version of NFV white paper as the SDN and OpenFlow uh, Congress. In addition, the Network Industry Specification Group or ISG was founded to promote the definition of network virtualization requirement and the formulation of a system architecture. So it started in 2012. So one year later on, ITSE, which stands for European Telecommunication Standard Institute, NFV ISG conducted the first phase of research and complete the formulation of related standard. The ETSI NFV ISG defined NFV requirement and architecture and sought out the standardization process of different interfaces. So it started in 2012, then it's become a standard in 2013. So what are so great about NFV? So let's look into the benefit of uh, using NFV. So we understand NFV is a network function virtualization. So here we look into the value of NFV. NFV aim to address issues such as complex deployment and O&M and service innovation difficulties due to large number of telecom network hardware devices. So if you work in telco before, you will notice that there are plenty of hardware with different type of uh, software that is running. NFV bring the following benefit to carriers while reconstructing telecom network. The first benefit is the shortening of the service roll-up time. Now this is important because for the service deployment, you only need to request virtual resources such as compute, storage and the network and the software that is loaded into the server. Hence, it's actually simplified the network deployment. So this is critical because in this case, we can shorten the service route time. Second is to reduce the network construction costs. Now, because we are using this general hardware, uh, enhance the network resources utilization and lowering the power consumption can lower the overall network cost because we know the benefit of virtualization is not all of these service are running concurrently 100%. So rather than we use 10 boxes, now we can just use a few boxes running on multiple software on top. So we can reduce quite a lot of electricity and the cooling over a period of time. So NFV also can use cloud computing using a universal hardware. So that also allow us to pull all the resources together, further reduce the cost. On top of that, we have all the cloud computing benefits such as uh, the scale in, the scale out, and the elasticity. I'm going to cover that later on. A third point is to improve the network O&M efficiency. So here, automated and centralized management improve the operation 
efficiency and reduce the O&M cost. Automation include data center based hardware unit management automation and the application live and the incorporate of this uh, SDN into it. And last but not least is the open ecosystem. The legacy telecom network exclusive software hardware model define a closed system. NFV based telecom network use an architect based on standard hardware platform and virtual software. So the architect easily provide open platform and open interface for third party developer and allow carrier to build open ecosystem together with the third party uh, partner. So this is where the telco is now liberated. So these are the four main benefit of using NFV. So let's look into the key uh, technology, which is virtualization. That is the magical word. So virtualization is a foundation of NFV and cloudification is the key. So I'm going to describe the cloudification. Please be patient. So let's look into how the virtualization work. On traditional telecom network, each network element or NE is implemented by dedicated hardware resulting in high cost and difficult O&M, especially we are using different vendor, right? So different vendor have different boxes and for us to maintain it, we will have a different way of maintaining. Maybe we are using a different management system. So virtualization features partition, isolation, encapsulation, and independent from hardware, which can meet NFV requirement. Carrier use virtualization to run software-based and on universal infrastructure. For those of you who are not really in the IT or virtualization, let me explain this. So virtualization means that you can have one single hardware, but on top of that, you are going to run multiple virtual machine. So multiple virtual machine can concurrently run on a single physical server. So here, traditionally, one application need a dedicated hardware. So if I have five application, I need to have five dedicated hardware. So rather than I'm using five dedicated hardware, I'm using one single universal hardware that is good enough for me to run five different applications concurrently. Okay, so this is what we call partitioning. Next, we have the isolation. So in the isolation, virtual machines that run on the same server are isolated from each other. So physically, they may have five different applications running, but they treat themselves as logically are separated or isolated. Then we also have the benefit of encapsulation. All data on the VM is saved in a files. A VM can be moved and replicate by moving and replicating the files because all of this information, including the operating system and the parameters are in a single file. So just like you want to move this application from one virtual machine or physical machine to another physical machine, you just simply copy and paste this particular virtual machine files. It's as simple as this. Last time we need to do migration, right? So now we just do a copying. It's as simple as this. So that is the benefit of encapsulation. And lastly, it's a hardware independent. So certain hardware um, are old. So you need to maintain the hardware uh, spare part. So it's become costly. So if new hardware are developed, typically it will be cheaper and more efficient to run. Because of the abstraction of this virtualization, uh, they are hardware independent. VM can run on any server without any modification. So it gives you a better benefit as in the performance, efficiency with a lower cost because the technology is always cheaper over time. So let's look into the cloudification that I mentioned earlier on. So the key NFV technology is cloudification. As defined by the National Institute of Standard and Technology, or we call NIST, cloud computing is a model that allows users to obtain resources, for example, the network, the server, the storage devices, application and services in a shared compute resource pool based on their need anytime and anywhere. A good example is a Huawei Clouds. So if you subscribe to Huawei Cloud, they will give you the network, the server or the CPU, the storage, the application that you want. Example, it can be a web server, it can be application, it can be e-commerce and the services that you want. Uh, it can be uh, software as a service, platform as a service or infrastructure as a service. Doesn't really matter. So this model enable fast resource provisioning and release and minimize the resource management workload and interaction with the service uh, provider. So let's look into the first example here. 
So here we have five benefits of using cloudification. The first one is the on-demand self-service. So cloud computing implement on-demand self-service of IT resources. So resources can request and release without the IT administrator to keep on buying the hardware. So you just have to swap your credit card. Depend on how many CPU RAM that you want, you just purchase it. So this is on-demand self-service. Next here, we have the uh, broad network access. User can access network anytime and anywhere, regardless where you are in the world, as long as you have internet. Third, we have the resource pooling. Here, resources include network server storage devices are in a resource pool. So user can use whatever resource in the pool, of course, with certain costs. Uh, next, we have the rapid elasticity. Resources can be quickly provisioned and released. The resource can be used immediately after being requested and can be reclaimed immediately after being released. So if you are the cloud provider, when the user want to use it, they pay you. When the user do not want to use it, they release it. So you regain back the resource and the next user can utilize it. So that is what we call elasticity. So the user do not need to pay for the hardware and own it and maintain it. That will be the responsibility for the cloud provider. And the final one is a measure service. Here the charging basis is that used resources are measurable. For example, charging is based on the number of CPU, the hard disk space that you are using, the bandwidth that you are using. So all these, they do have a report and it's all being meters. All right, so these are the main benefit of a cloudification. Next, let's look into the introduction of NFV architecture. The NFV architecture include the network function virtualization infrastructure or what we call NFVI. Then we also have a virtualized network function, VNF, and management and orchestration, we just call it as MANO. In addition, the NFV architecture need to support the existing business support system or BSS and operation support system or OSS. So if you are in telco, most likely you understand this concept. So right at the bottom, we have our NFVI that provide all your resources. Then we have our NVNF, which is the virtualized network function that use the cloud resources to construct the software network element. And on top, these are the application, the OSS slash BSS is an assisting operation that can support operation and management system. So all these are used by by this manual, which is the management and orchestration, provide functions such as the service orchestration, service management, and resource management. So this is a general overview of how the NFV architecture work. So next we look into the standard of uh, NFV architecture. ETSI defined the standard NFVI architecture, which consists of NFVI, VNF, and MANU. The NFVI include the universal hardware layer, which is your physical hardware, and the virtualized layer. The VNF is implemented using software, and the MANU implement management and orchestration on NFV architecture. So here we have the diagram. Right at the bottom, we have the hardware. Okay, so you can see that we have the CPU, we have the hard disk, we have the network. On top of it, we have the virtual computing, virtual storage, and virtual network. This become a pool to present to the application. And this application will run on the virtual network function one, two, three. And on top, we have the uh, OSS and BSS. And all these three levels are being managed by uh, Manu. So in the Manu, we have the virtualized uh, infrastructure manager. We have a VNF manager and we also have the VNF orchestrator. So these are the general architecture on how NFV uh, work. So let's look into the function module of uh, NFV. What are the main function that's defined in the uh, standard? So on the very top, we have the OSS and BSS. So here, this part is a management system for service provider. It is not a functional component in NFV, but the manual must provide an interface. Uh, remember, if let's say you are being charged for amount of a bandwidth you are using on your handphone or the call that you are make, all these are being done by OSS and BSS. And remember that you have a lot of packages that you can subscribe, prepaid or postpaid. That is also the function of OSS and BSS. Then we have the manual. Okay, that is the part of uh, uh, orchestration part, the management and the orchestration. So NFV management and orchestration, the menu include the VIM, VNFM, and VFVO. Then we have the 
BNF, and finally the physical layer, which is the NMVI. So just an overview to give you on the uh, architecture, on their functional. So if you are interested, you can get more detail uh, by reading additional materials. So some of the NFV architecture, uh, remember that these are all the uh, interfaces that I mentioned early on. So the main interface of the standard NFV architecture. So we do not need to remember all this by heart because uh, we are looking into the general overview. But if you are really interested on how to configure an FV, well, you do need to know what is all these interfaces are for. So what is the Huawei NFV solution? Okay, so let's look into the Huawei solution. In the Huawei NFV architecture, function of the virtualized layer and uh, VIM are implemented by Huawei Cloud Stack NFVI platform. Huawei Cloud Stack can virtualize compute, the storage and the network resources and centralize, manage, monitor and optimize physical virtualization resources. Huawei provides cloud-based solution for carrier, wireless network, barrier network, transport network, access network and core network, which basically uh, referring to your carrier, which is your mobile phone, your barrier network, which is your voice phone, your transport network, which carry your signal over the transmission, access network, which is your broadband, and the call network. So all these are being offered by Huawei. So these are very carrier-centric solution. So as you can see from here, these are the solution they have on the physical layer, computing, storage, and network. On the Huawei cloud stack, this is the one that we should look for, the fusion compute, fusion storage, fusion network, and the open stack. And uh, menu, we have uh, NFVO and VNFM. So on top of that, we have the virtual network function that include Cloud DB, Cloud DSL slash OLT, Cloud H, Cloud Core, and 5G Core. You can see that all this has been virtualized. So in the traditional way, all these are boxes, are uh, customized hardware with software installed. So here we can actually run on the software running on the general computing hardware. Okay, so in this topic, we look into the transformation and development of the network industry, specifically on SDN and NFV are the proposed solution. SDN is an innovation of a network architecture, is used controller to make network more open, flexible, and simple. Remember the iMaster NCE, right? Then we have the NFV, network function virtualization, is an innovation in the development of telecom network devices based on virtualization and cloud computing. NFV help reconstruct the telecom network. So I hope you enjoyed this session. This is a very high level talking about SDN and NFV. So I hope that I give you some insight of these two technology and I hope to see you on the next module. Thank you. Goodbye.